the official podcast of CountryHodgePodge.com. I'm your host, Steve Hodge, and joining me, as always, is my co-host, cousin, and lover, Kevin Hodge. Noop noop. <laughs> We're fans of Rick and Morty. Um, what the hell's going on? What's going on? Oh. Oh, little. Computer froze for a second, so I freaked out because Kevin and I are cursed. <laughs> when, it come, when it comes to recording, so even if we're recording in the same room, which we are with the same mic, which we are, we are cursed. We're this podcast is just born to fail. Um, but yeah, we're in the same. So this is why it's coming up late because we were going to record yesterday. Cause, well, we couldn't earlier in the week, so we were going to record yesterday. And they're like, "Hey, I'm coming out tomorrow, so let's just let's just fucking wait till tomorrow to do it. Who cares?" So we decided, "Hey, we'll record today," and so. Sorry it's late for the millions of listeners who have been texting me and tweeting me and Instagramming me and sending me dick pics saying, where is the podcast? Yeah, no, I know I know so many people are just waiting, just waiting for this to go live. Yes. So, anyway, uh, uh, we're drinking beer on a Friday night, not going to bars because we're losers. Well, we're going to be drinking a lot. Yeah. A lot. We're saving ourselves for beer marriage. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so yeah, uh, this weekend or week or whatever, CMA Fest happened, Kevin, and um, my mom walked downstairs saying, I thought a country concert was on, who is this Sam Hunt guy and why is he rapping? And I said, (laughs) and I was over here like, oh, I forgot that CMA Fest was even a thing and or happened this week. I went to the, I follow CMA on Instagram, or we do, I guess, technically, but I do not. (laughs) I'm the only one who runs the account so you don't really ever look at it but cma was posting like look at all these uh performances from tonight and it was thomas rett and Marin moore singing craving you which is an awful song it was gooch singing my flat bills backwards remix with nelly or whatever uh and then i saw classic 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 i can't remember i saw like two more pop artists and i was just like this is bad like Who's watching this? So remind me again, what the fuck is CMA Fest? I don't know. All right, isn't it the festival <laughs> leading up to the CMA Awards? Yeah, you sure? I don't yeah. fucking yeah. We're, you can tell that me and Kevin follow the mainstream very closely, which we should because we run a country site. But... Well, no, that's the reason why we don't watch CMA Fest is because we. we I have know, a but we, we should probably follow it for news' sake that we don't. But whatever. Um, uh, I have a busy life, and I'm not going to sink my time into that. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough, Kevin. Um, so today nope. we're going to do uh, Jamie Johnson because he's amazing and we want to talk yep. about him. But So I was Googling, before we get into him, I was Googling Jamie Johnson, you know, just kind of read stuff about him before we did it. And when you Google something on your phone, I'm sure it's for everything, but it'll say, people also ask like, what do people also search? So, uh-huh. I'm gonna, so I'm going to ask you these questions, Kevin, Blah. and you have to give me the answer of what they are. Thank you for burping on our podcast. That sounded amazing. <laughs> um, so, Kevin, I'm going to ask you these Google questions that people ask very commonly. Who is Whitey Morgan? <laughs> uh, he's, a, he's a mortician who uh, yes. has many warts. Morty Mortician, yes. Yes. Um, how is Hank Williams Jr.? <laughs> how now... Brown cow. <laughs> is David Allen Coe still alive? <laughs> I follow up with, is David Allen Coe still Confederate flag guitar? No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is this is not a super dumb question, but where did Willie Nelson grow up? Texas. Yeah. <laughs> Who is Hank William Jr.'s son? <laughs> well, Hank Williams the third. He just kept that. They just kept that going. <laughs> turns out that uh, there's only one name, and it's Hank. And if you're... Uh, I think the girls are just, like, Sparta down the hole. They're just like, nope, nope, gotta have dudes in there. Well, there's Hank. Hollywood. You shut your face. <laughs> he was a very, very good artist. Mm-mm. And then finally, Kevin, how old was Hank Williams Jr. when he died? <laughs> <laughs> so we gotta, we gotta predict the future. Okay, so <laughs> Hank Williams Jr. will die I don't at know the how old ripe he is old now. age of 70... Four. Oh, that's a shame. Isn't he like 70? I think he's in his 60s. Watch him be 74 right now. Let's see. Hank Jr. is... Google's not telling me. Survey... 68. Se- so he's got oh, six shit. more years in his life. Sorry, Hank. Kevin, <laughs> you, done, you killed Hank Jr. How do you feel about that? 
I don't. I don't know. <sighs> But yeah, those are the questions that were asked on Google when I was Googling Jamie Johnson. Just what? <laughs> I do like, though, that they have the uh, uh, the who is Whitey Morgan. I can't help it. It's just, just science. <laughs> who is Whitey Morgan? Yeah, that one did make me laugh because I was like, well, at least they know that he's a person when you're Googling Jamie C. <laughs> well, I have to imagine it had to be from, uh, if, you know, from the Tumbleweed Fest because he was on stage with them. Yeah. Um, okay, so, I, yeah, I didn't know until recently that Jamie Johnson was a mortarman in the Marines. Yeah, no, I didn't know that. Well, I, I mean, I knew it, but not till recently, and I think that's, that's insane. So he went to, he was also uh, in the marching band at Jacksonville State. I nice. Know. He dropped out of college after two years, though, that's when he went to the Marines. Uh, then after, one of his first gigs was opening for David Allen Coe. That's not bad. Which is, yeah, it's a pretty good way to start. My first I mean, we we was... saw him and David Allen Coe on the same day. That's true. We did. Well, the first time we saw Jamie Johnson was Country Beatdown. Country Beatdown. In 2011, I think. No, wasn't it before that? It was for, I don't wasn't know. Wasn't I still in high school? I think you had just graduated. Okay, maybe. so that would have been 2010. 2010. Yeah, but we saw him then, and we didn't really... I mean, we knew his songs a little bit, but we didn't... Like, that's the concert I wish we had known more about the artist, because... Well, Eric Church and Jamie Johnson. Yeah, we saw Eric Church and Jamie Johnson. We didn't really know him. We saw Mon- We knew Montgomery Gentry really well. We also saw Eli Young Band, Jack Ingram. We did? Yeah, they were there, too. You don't remember that? Nope. Well, I, you don't remember Jack Ingram just being like, This song went number one! Oh, okay. No, I remember that. And I remember being like, Well, fuck this guy. Yeah. Even though, I have never changed that opinion well, since. Well, actually, his newest album is really good. That Live from the Motel one or whatever. Yeah, but I just, I couldn't, I just can't get, what's the fucking, what's the one song that you know that I would hate by him? I, I don't know. Uh, whatever one was popular. What was it? Banging Skanks and Drinking Dranks. Um, That's a good song. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, later in his career, Jamie Johnson wrote Ladies Love Country Boys and I Got My Game On for Chase Atkins. And then he reached, he did a couple for Joe Nichols. Uh, and then he, I think he broke out when he wrote for, uh, George Strait. George Strait. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he, like, I guess I was reading, like, he started off kind of being signed and then once his CD just kind of fluttered they dropped him and then he's just like all right well fuck you i'm just gonna <laughs> yeah well because i i noticed this the lat this you know listening to him for this podcast kind of going back through everything that uh the beginning of that lonesome song the album the first song is called released and he oh, yeah. in it in it it's like him being released from prison but the line that is it's just like a, a, a it's not an instrumental it's just like literally just the sound of him like grabbing his shit and then like the jailer saying you know mr johnson you're free to do what whatever you want or whatever and i'm like <laughs> that's totally him saying that because of his old label really like 100 percent. and you can totally tell too just from the the album art of his first album with him in a fucking cowboy hat and short beard and like a plaid shirt and none of it looks like him, like yeah. doing his thing. It's completely. And yeah. so you can tell. Um, so right when that lonesome song I starts with the first, song with the first song being called "Released," is like, yeah, There's that's that's you know what I'd that like to do. Redneck side of me was written by Jared Neiman. Yes, I did because I did my research this time. Oh, Kevin did research for the podcast. Look at this. Look at this song written by. Whoa. Written by. Oh shit, Kevin. Boom. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. I didn't realize until I was looking through his CD that like every CD he's released has a cover on it, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Like I, I never kind of because I mean I, I I hate when people are like, oh you you're not you don't act you're not a fan of traditional you don't listen to the old stuff. I'm like, well I do. It's just I don't know every single artist. Like I don't know how many times my dad's walked in like, oh have you ever heard of this guy? I'm like. No, Dad, because he has one song from the 1960s that I've never heard. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you ha- you knew that he, he the the Waylon songs that he covered, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, of course. Ah. Because uh, Mental Revenge is amazing. The but... door is always open. The door is always open. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Um. Do we have? I don't really have much to say about. I mean, the only thing I would want to. I. I mean, the only thing I really want to say is just that. In my opinion, 
he's like I mean I guess when when did uh when did that lonesome song come out the album? Twenty ten? Okay, so from basically no, in two thousand eight. Yeah, so basically in my opinion, yeah, so it, it stands yeah, that it stands that in, in, in the last decade, you know, some of the best music that's been written and recorded has been by Jamie Johnson. Like yeah. he's just that he's just that good. I realize the hyperbole in that sentence, but I I just think he's that good. Yeah, the only thing, yeah, well, it's I guess it gets into it. I I wrote an article like right when we started the site, so obviously no one's really read it. But I talked about like these are the artists that we haven't heard from in forever, and yeah, the guitar yeah. song by Jamie Johnson is seven years old. Yeah, already, which is insane. And all he's released, I I don't really listen to it. I don't talk too much about it. But he released that Hank Cochran tribute cd in 2012 yeah my my favorite from that album is the one with george Strait, the eagle i think that's a really good song but and and honestly the album is really good oh yeah it's just yeah, yeah. it's just doesn't since it's a tribute album and he's got guest singers on every single song it doesn't feel like his music yeah it's good but it doesn't feel like his yeah Oh, he's got Merle on a song? Yeah, I, it does. I've only heard that CD like once or twice because it got taken off Spotify really quick. It's on Spotify right now. Oh, they added it back? It was, I was listening to it earlier this, oh, earlier it, this well, week. For the longest time, it was grayed out on Spotify, and I couldn't listen to it. So he must have brought it back. But, uh, Kevin, that's a loading screen. That's You're not showing me anything right now. <laughs> Damn you, Apple! <laughs> um, well, up until... What are you doing? What are you doing, Kevin? What you doing? What you do with, Shorty, what what you do with them lips, baby? Shorty, what your name is. What's your name? Oh, it is on there. Frick. Yeah, that's right. I'm censoring myself now. This is a PG podcast. <laughs> yeah, never. Um. Anyway, do you want to do... We're going to do a top... S- or did you do the number one that we were saying? Yeah, we were yeah, do? no. We're going to do a top six. Because... Well, the- okay, so here's here's the thing. I did, I did a, a top ten... Of songs that he wrote, and then I did a top five of just songs that he either covered or didn't write. Are just top- because it ended up working out that way, kind of, and then I just wanted to... There's some of the songs that he covered that I really liked, but I didn't want to include them in a top ten, but I also wanted to say that they're really good. Yeah. Um. Did you, For the songs you wrote, are you talking about ones that he released on his CDs that he wrote, or like songs you Songs that wrote? he released on his oh, okay. CDs that he wrote. I was going to say, because... If anyone doesn't know, he's written a lot of songs yeah. for a lot of them. Yeah, no, people. I basically I had like thirty songs that I had to dwindle down from to make my top ten. I only had like twenty, and so, <laughs> and so I, I the, the the easiest way to go from there was just like, well, if, if I just ignore all the songs that he didn't write, then I'll just have an easier group of songs to pick from. Do you want to do his five? I mean, I didn't do a five of. Covers, yeah, no, so I'll I'll, I'll rip first. through yeah, the the five that that I thought were his we could best talk about five. Time, but... Uh, yeah, so the, the best one that he didn't write, I think, is Mental Revenge. Yeah, the, the Waylon Jennings song. It, I love it because it's his is like so sinister and slow. Yes, but the Waylon Jennings one is just so like it's like so. Exactly. Whereas Jamie Johnson is like, I hope you die. <laughs> like, yeah, and then following it up, the the Waylon cover, "The Door Is Always Open," is the second one. I I thought I, I just think it's a really good um, number three. Set him up, Joe. The Vern Gosden song. Um, yeah. he, I, I honestly feel like his version's better because Vern Gosden's oh, just like really old. That, that reminds me really quick. It's not really about the song in mm. itself, but the thing I love about guitar song is it's one of those CDs where every song goes into the next yep. one. So yep. it sounds like it's one long track because I know that's kind of how it ends where it's just like, doesn't it start like they're at like a bar or something like from yep. the previous yep. song? And, and then, then, and then yeah. he's like tuning the guitar. Like, yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, yep. I, yeah, that's I love that. Yeah, and then uh, four, I had the Eagle, you know, the Hank Cochran song. It's yeah. with George Strait. I think it's really good. And then number five, Lonely at the Top, which fun fact, co-written by Keith Whitley. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I think I think that's a really really good song. But I, I wanted to kind of include it in my top ten, but I didn't know, and so that was this is how I got around. I do to it. I, I do love that song. Yeah. Um. All right. Yeah. So we could do our top six of other songs by him. Yeah, and it's kind of funny after because we, when we decided that we were going to do a top six because of our our mutual number one that just has to be number one. Which, if you're a Jamie Johnson fan, or if you yeah. if you only know one song by Jamie Johnson, well, you know. It, yeah, so. <laughs> um, but it, it actually ended up working out that the like 
the six songs like really is the songs that I listen to the most. But yeah, it really did work. Actually, out that same. Way. Yeah. Uh, so number six, Kevon. Uh, Flying Silver Eagle. Yeah, where he starts to establish his hatred for banker. He man. hates the banker man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He. Uh, so pretty much, if you've never heard the song before, it's pretty much he's dating a girl. She leaves him for money rather than love, and then later down the road, so he takes the ring that he gave the girl, it melts it down, makes a silver eagle that he wears on a necklace around his. And then later he's walking on the street. He sees a homeless banker man, and she's like, "She took all my money." And he's like, "Yeah, well, I got a flying yeah. silver eagle." So. Yep. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. Uh, my number six, you might hate me for having it this high, but that lonesome song, because... Why would you ever have it that fucking <laughs> low? Or high, or whatever you want to call it. I'm high. Uh, it's, we'll talk about it when it, if we inevitably get a two on yours, but... I, you motherfucker. Well, it's just... I, it, dude, it's you hard. You think you know a guy. It's, it's hard to choose which Jamie Johnson song is the I understand that this, he has very, very good music, but, like, no. Well, when we get to my top, you'll understand why I had it lower than others. Uh, number five, five. Kevin. Number five, cover your eyes. See? Go fuck yourself. That's higher on At my list. At least I had it on number five. Brother, 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 brother. Brother, number six. Oh, we peaked that really bad. <laughs> We'll talk about it when we get to him for me, then. Uh, my number five was The Dollar. That's a good song. The Dollar. That's so. a really good, that song is, like, it, it's deceptively good. Like, if you don't pay attention to it, like, I mean, obviously, the the, wor- the lyric, it's not trying to trick you, but yeah. I feel like it's one of those songs you could listen to and not really kind of pay attention because it's kind of upbeat and then realize what it's actually about, like, with the, the kid just really wanting to spend time with his dad and he finds out that... You know, he he asks his mom, "What is, where does daddy go when he leaves?" And she's like, "Oh, well, the, they pay him for his time." And so he runs up to his room to try to find money to to spend so he can spend time with his dad. And like that's a really yeah, he comes, really good. He song. comes down with like sixty five cents or something. He's like, "How much time will this buy? Can you know? T- can you take me to the park? Yep. Can we go camping?" And and then he goes up. and He finds like thirty five more cents. So he comes down with a dollar. And she so she calls her husband while he's at work and goes, "Come on home. He's found that dollar you've been you've been hunting for and yep. all that." And it's just a really like yeah. nice song, like a little family song type yeah. thing. Number four is "Can't Cash My Checks." Yep, fucking love that song. It's like seven minutes long, which is like honestly, it doesn't feel like it's that long. Cause it's just great, but it's basically like. You you can do whatever you want, but you can't take this away from me. Yeah, like no matter what you do, you can break my heart. You can do all this to me, but you can't take my money from yeah, me. You it's can't like, take it. You, yeah, and it's just you can't take that this part of me. And is the crops he's talking about like farming or weed? <laughs> because <laughs> it's remember, definitely weed. Because we hundred percent. Yeah, if you look up all over the hill, you'll see all these crops that are paying my bills. Because in when he was talking, I remember when we, we saw him plants. in concert. He says plants. Yeah, but because when we saw him in concert, he was just like, uh, "I wrote this song after we smoked a little bit of weed," and then he yep. goes into it. So I was like, "Oh, that's yeah, the plant has yeah, to be." Yeah, the, the line where he says, "If you look up over these hills, you'll be see, you'll see all them plants that are plant, paying my bills." Yeah, that totally yeah. weed. Yeah, figured. Yeah, but that song, I love it. That's one. Of, I think that was the first song by him I ever learned on guitar because it's, it's just, I don't know, it's really slow. It's, it's really so nice. I love that good. song. Uh, my number four was Flying Silver Eagle, which we talked about. What? Uh, number three, Kevin. Number three, Back to Caroline. Back to Caroline. I just the this is one of those songs where shout out Jay, you just like yeah, I was hear just saying, you just the hear the the. Like it's just oh, I love this song so much, and it's it's all about being out on the road, and then uh, he sees this drifter dude who's like, I haven't been home in like twenty five years, and he's like, oh shit, I gotta go home and see the see the family. yeah, because he said he doesn't he say like he hasn't called his family and like he because like the, the nights or something well yeah, like so that, the the or? guy that he meets is like something like five years or whatever, and then he's like, well, I haven't seen, I haven't talked to them in like five weeks or five nights or yeah, something yeah. like that. And then he realizes he he has like a kind of that momentary, you know, realizing what actually matters in life, and he's like, I got to get back to Caroline, and yeah, make it back home. Uh, number three, three. Uh, three, my number three is "Can't Cash My Checks," which we just talked about. Such a good song. I know, I love that song. Number two, that lonesome <laughs> song. <laughs> Jesus, Christ. this is this is yeah. We just peaked that. So, so I'm sorry if I'm we're blowing out anyone's ears. 
Uh, we're we're drinking and we can't control the volume of our voice anymore. Um, Sometimes I can't do that during the normal day. That's true, very true. Um, so yeah, that lonesome song. It's about a song that has a lot of friends. And Kevin, you tell you this one. I need another. Beer. <laughs> <laughs> that lonesome song is a great. It, it's about basically living a the hard and fast life, kind of out on the road and whatever. And he wakes up. Wakes up hungover as fuck in his car. Sun comes in through the window and he's just kind of like, what the hell am I doing with my life? You know, what the hell's going on? What time is it? What day is it? What year is it? And then just, it's great. My favorite lyric is the trying to remember words to a song nobody wrote. Yeah, trying to remember words to a song nobody wrote. I love that lyric. It's, I mean, as a a really shitty song. Yeah, or just, I love... What the hell did I do last night? That's the story of my life. Yep. That one, that one is just college for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I do. So I that means that number two for you is cover your eyes. Yeah, that song is. It, it is really, really good. It's so haunting. The only it's... thing, the only reason that I had it lower, which still mine was at five. So fuck yeah. yourself. <laughs> um, <laughs> the only reason because I know that I listened to the other the other couple more. Oh, yeah, that, that's, that's this is this only other than number one. This is the song I listen to the most by far because it's just mm. so. It's it's like pretty much just isn't it? I mean, I could be wrong. But it's pretty much just kind of like a we've broken up and just kind of say I want to like, say that he's saying goodbye to his child. Cover your eyes. Because I want to say that the whole song is that he's he's leaving and he's saying goodbye to his child and he's just like cover your eyes. Oh yeah, because it won't it, last forever. And then it just yeah, it's because it's like I'm sorry, phone call is the best I can do. Like it's mm-hmm. just kind of yeah, it's just so like I love. I mean, this is definitely it's the dark version, and sad and just. But yeah. I love the Jason Cassidy cover of it on his. Uh, well, now it's his third new CD because he's had two come out since. But, um, like, yeah, the Jason Cassidy cover. So it's just so haunting, and I love songs that just sound like that, where it's just yeah. you, you can tell the emotion he's putting into the song. Well, it's it's a good, you know, perfect example of how great he is at writing songs. He's yeah. so good at writing songs. Yes, yes, yes. And then. Obviously, Numero uno, Numero as one. everyone would imagine, is in color because although it's gotten, it's I mean I guess I can't say that it's gotten overplayed because it never went number one, which is a travesty of biblical proportions. Seven, I think. Um, but even though that that's one that I oh, we P- heard a lot, nine. yeah, and even though it's one I heard a lot and a lot, it's just like if you were to ask me to make a best songs of the last twenty five years kind of thing, like it would be on there. So it's got to be number one for me for Jamie Johnson. Like it's just that's just it's got to be. Yeah, it's Jamie Johnson's guitar song went number one. The CD that's that's well, cool. a great. Well, it's two CDs, so that's two number ones. Oh god, I love that CD so much. Um, but yeah, yeah, in color. It's if you haven't heard it. I, I don't know why you're listening to the... If, well, you might be a regular listener. If so, hello, I love you. But also, how did but, you not hear this song? Yeah, if but if you're listening for Jamie Johnson, you you know this song. But if not, the song is about... He's like talking to his grandpa. He's like found pretty much like a box of photos. And he's just like, oh yeah, you think that's cool. Well, you should have seen it in color. Like yep. back when I was living it. Like He talks about his wedding day. He talks about being at war. He talks about uh, being on his grandpa's farm during the Depression and all this. It's just... Oh, it's so good. I know he he wrote it actually for Trace Adkins, but after he wrote it, he's just like, "Can I just record it?" Because <laughs> I really like this song. So Jay, Jay Johnson recorded it. Actually, Trace Adkins did record it. It was like on a Walmart version of like edition yeah. of one of his song yep. CDs or something, and it's good. But Jamie Johnson, you just like, can't touch his yeah, version. Of like it. I love Trace Adkins. Obviously, we did an episode on him, episode four, I think. But we did sure. we did an episode on him, and his voice is amazing. But Jamie Johnson singing this song is just perfect. Like it's it is a Jamie Johnson song. Like that's all there is to it. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, so yeah, that's our top six because yeah, we we knew. Yeah. Number, In color had to be number, number one. Number one was a gimme, so we decided to do yeah. an extra one because we wanted to see what we would pick. And it turns out uh, you had that lonesome song way too low. So fuck yourself. <laughs> Um. So this week, do we have anything else about Jamie Johnson? He's got a bitchin' beard. Um, 
Oh, Kevin, we didn't talk about his best CD. His Christmas CD that he released last year. I thought you were going to talk about his his uh, so- album that you can't find anymore that was actually his, his debut. His they call, they call Me Country? Album. Yeah. No. He's yeah. got a beer song that's really good on He that. released a Christmas album last year, and I didn't listen. It was original Christmas songs, so though. It wasn't him just singing jingles. On a scale so. from one to my rant about Christmas albums, where do you want to go? <laughs> Kevin, you are such a fucking Grinch. Um, let's see. I'm sorry that I want original music and not fucking everything about that. goddamn bullshit ass Christmas albums. Oh, it doesn't happen on Spotify anymore. Oh though. no, there's no Christmas album on Spotify. Well, Ke- <laughs> Kevin, you're so mean. You're such a mean man. The Christmas songs. See, these are the songs he put on it. Baby's Cold Outside, so he did cover it. Melly Clicky Maka. South Alabama Christmas. Alabama, not Alabama, Kevin. Alabama. Feel like making love. Uh, Pretty Paper, which was written by Willie Nelson, and then the Christmas song. So he did a bunch of covers. So yeah, your hero, Jamie Johnson, also likes Christmas, Kevin. Oh, probably also likes making money off of making a simple-ass Christmas (laughs) album. Hey, I would too. Yeah, Um, I have no problem with the making of them. I have the problem with playing them. (laughs) Yeah, so anyway, uh, the CDs that came out today, actually, I've gotten to listen to them, which is nice for once, instead of me just being like, oh, this is coming out, I think. Uh, The CDs that did come out, first, obviously the biggest one, Josh Abbott Bands, Until My Voice Goes Out. Real good. Not as great as Front Row Seat, but that's a really high bar, so it's... Yeah, to me, it was... uh... You know, the songs that I didn't really, you know, like as much still were not bad. They just, you know, weren't weren't totally, you know, I wasn't totally feeling them. But the songs that I did like, I did like a lot. So, you know, definitely a favorable review overall. But at the same time, you know, if it, there's some songs that, you know, I didn't like as much. But, you know, I have different tastes than other people. So it's definitely worth checking out, though. Yeah, it's good. Um, also, Ray Wiley Hubbard, Tell the Devil That I'm Getting There As Fast As I Can, which is a great CD yeah. name. Um, the title track actually has Lucinda Williams and Eric Church on it. So, is this Eric Church? Is this Eric Church? This is Eric Church. Um, it's good. It's, it's the traditional outlaw sound of Ray Wiley Hubbard. It's nothing. He's not changing anything he's doing. If it ain't broke, don't fix it type thing. Um, then, other than that, there was... Wasn't there another one that came out? Oh, Probably. it was gonna it was gonna be Loretta Lynn CD, but they delayed it. Um, oh, yeah. But uh, Joe Mullins and the Radio Ramblers, the story we tell. It's a really good bluegrass album if you like it. I don't know too much about them. I just heard it today, and I was like, that's eh, good. Um, Dale Ann Bradley's self titled album. She's won International Bluegrass Music Music Association 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 Association. She's won the bet or like the award for best female vocalist or vocalist of the year she's won it five times and she's been nominated for it five more times so she's pretty good <laughs> wow yeah okay <laughs> yeah and then she has a song with vince gill on it so she's she's a real real good and uh so check that one out and then an ep by jericho woods called bonfire songs we listened to that one a little yeah bit no earlier. that from what i heard of it it was it was really good it's real good sure. traditional country like i i said in an article i posted on our website country hodgepodge.com uh hashtag country hodgepodge.com hashtag you need to include the hashtags otherwise it won't load <laughs> that's a lie hashtag one love um but it's it, the, the cd's pretty it sounds like songs you'd sing around a bonfire like they're just really good traditional songs does um, he know any wings Tell love, take me down, down to, to the streets. streets. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, uh, that's it for this week. This is a very short This was episode. a really quick one. Wow, we plowed through it. I mean, we were we did a lot of crack before we did this, so we're, like, sped up. So. Yep. Turns out, cocaine's a hell of a drug. Cocaine's a hell of a drug. Uh, but, yeah, we didn't have too much to talk about, so it's not surprising. Yeah, but don't let that make it sound like we don't have that much to talk about Jamie Johnson. It's just that his music is phenomenal and it really speaks for itself. Well, we started talking about him at like yeah, I know. five. That's what I'm saying. So. Like, like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want it to be like, well, it was really short because we didn't say shit. But no, he's he's really good. His music speaks for itself, though. It's tremendous. Uh, listen to it. I mean, and if Jamie, if you're listening, which I know you're not, please give us a new album. Please, I mean, God. Please. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the only other things we'd really have to say about it is... The reason why he hasn't had a CD come out in a while, he's had a couple explanations, including he had a concussion that he's not really been able to focus. 
um, like the labels have been fucking yeah. songwriters yeah, where the, he's not making any money off yeah, of it. Yeah, the labels anymore. have got him in a shit spot, so he doesn't want to burn good music. Bars aren't on letting it. him carry guns in his yeah. bars. That one's weird, thing. but like I'm not from Alabama, so I can't totally <laughs> judge. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, that's all really. Yeah. Um, what have we been listening to? Have we been listening to anything new? Uh... I know. Who Honestly, is- you know what? Honestly, I have just been listening to Tyler Childers' album on repeat for is Ooh. just I've not stopped listening to it. Uh, Tony Jackson. Tony, yes, Tony Jackson CD is really. Fucking if you good. haven't seen him cover George Jones' The Grand Tour, it's it's amazing. But honestly, my favorite song from that album is the song "It's Only Make Believe," which is like a really like throwback traditional sound, and he's just got pipes like absolute yeah, pipes. He's so good. Yeah, he's really good. So if you haven't heard Tony Jackson, listen to him. Uh, Kevin Kesha has country songs. Yeah, no, this is actually a good point. <laughs> I got you know. So every once in a while, I'll get texted or whatever, and just be like, "Check out Blaga Blaga, what the fuck's new song? Dude, it's I country." Love Blaga Blaga, what the fuck? And it inevitably every time I'm just like, "Okay, this song has a guitar in it. That doesn't mean it's fucking country." That's However, nice. when I was texted this week, and and Abby was like, "Hey, listen to Kesha's." New, she, she she well she specifically told me the song to listen to. She didn't say listen to the whole album. So I listened to these songs that she told me to. That she said that they were country, and I was very surprised to find out that actually they were they were country. Like they they mostly folk. I, I said, this is the same girl that made TikTok. Yeah, and like listen to how much better this is. Despite the audio quality probably being terrible. Going from mic to mic or whatever. <laughs> yeah, like, I still... Like, that's a folk song. Like, that's yeah. a legit folk song. Yeah, and that's that, awesome. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. The fact that Kesha's deciding to make actual music now, that's pretty cool. I mean, I'm not... But a, what if you wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy, <laughs> and then you need to also wash your... Brush your teeth, brush your with, teeth a with a bottle of Jack? Jack. Um, but like who would ever do that if you woke up feeling like p diddy i'm guessing that means you're feeling hungover or you're feeling great i don't fucking know if you you wake up feeling rich i don't know regardless Uh, i ain't brushing my teeth with fucking whiskey yeah anyway you can find us at countryhodgepodge.com our instagram facebook and twitter is country hodgepodge uh kevin's spotify playlist picks of the week you should listen to or kevin's picks of the yeah, week yeah, yeah. if you need to if you can't find it that way his his name on spotify donkey is factory one word donkey factory um <laughs> all of my i'm realizing now that all of my social media names are fucking stupid <laughs> yeah and his twitter is churchford um <laughs> Uh, you can also find the Hodge Podcast Picks Spotify playlist. It's where we post all the songs we talk about each week. Uh, it has all of them from episode one till now of the songs we've mentioned. Uh, you can find me on Facebook and Twitter at Steve Hodge Music. Like I said, Kevin's Twitter is Chargeford, spelled how it sounds. Um, that's it for this week. Next week, we're going to be talking about Sam Hunt. Stay tuned. Uh, so until next week. Stay sexy and don't get murdered. No, that's the wrong podcast. Uh, 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 goodbye, good night, and good Some 41. Sh- Damn it! Shit! <laughs> good Charlotte. I love you.